we were looking at absolute continuity. So excess measurable space and mu new sign measures. We say that nu is absolutely continuous with respect to mu if mod mu e equal to 0 implies mu e equal to 0. It's not mu e equal to 0 but mod mu e equal to 0. Okay, so this is uh, notion of absolute continuity and then uh, so now we have the following definition x uh, x s measurable space mu nu sign measures we say that mu is equivalent to nu mu is equivalent to nu if mu is absolutely continuous with nu and nu is absolutely continuous with respect to mu this can happen for example so you have that mu is equivalent to mod mu because that is trivial because mu is absolutely continuous with the mod mu and mod mu is trivially absolutely continuous with respect to mu right from the definition which we have written above okay so now when we were looking at uh, excess mu measure space f integrable and we define nu of e as integral f d mu over e. Okay, so then we saw gave this example as being absolutely continuous with respect to this definition and so nu is absolutely continuous with respect to mu. Now we also proved the following that uh, you have that given epsilon positive, there exists a delta positive such that mod mu e less than delta implies nu e less than epsilon. So we saw this uh, and I also called this absolute continuity. So I have mentioned absolute continuity with respect to this particular measure nu e equals integral f of f over e d mu in two ways. So we reconcile both these things uh, in the following proposition. Notice that this is a finite measure because f is integrable. Okay, so prop proposition excess measurable space mu nu sign measures nu is finite and absolutely continuous with respect to mu then given epsilon positive there exists a delta positive such that mod mu e less than delta implies nu e is less than mod nu e so epsilon uh, e in s of course okay so this tells you this exactly the same thing which we had in the case of the so proof previous example so proof Assume the contrary. That means given any there that means there exists an epsilon such so that for every delta that is violated, so for every n in n there exists a e n such so that mod mu e n is less than 1 by 2 power n while mod nu e is greater than or equal to epsilon. So now you take e equal to lim sup 
and tending to infinity of the ens. We call this is equal to integral n equals 1 to infinity uh, union uh, uh, m equals n to infinity em. Okay, so this is the definition of the limb in a limb soup, in soup. Okay, so now, so for every n in capital N, you have that mod mu e is less than or equal to sigma m equals n to infinity mod mu e m because it is a measure and uh, this intersection here. So, this is true for everything and that is mod mu e m is less than 1 by 2 power m. So, you are summing a geometric series that is 1 less than 1 by 2 power n minus 1. Okay, And this is true for every n. So, this implies that mod mu e equal to 0. On the contrary, mu e is a limb in a limb soup and we have seen since nu is finite we have that nu of e is greater or equal to limb soup mod nu sorry mod nu of e n and tending to infinity. This is an exercise which we have already done and that since each of them is bigger than epsilon this is greater equal to epsilon. Therefore, you have that uh, mod nu e is greater equal to epsilon and consequently we have uh, contradicts absolutely absolute continuity of uh, new with respect to me. Okay, so that reconciles the two kinds of definitions. So, example, not true if new is not finite. Okay. So, you take x famous example x equals n, s equals power set of n. And then you take mu of singleton n equals 2 power minus n and nu of singleton n equals 2 power n. And from this you can generate a measure because you define it over each atom, each point and then by countable additivity you can expand it, find the measure for everything. Okay, so then mu nu are uh, measures nu not finite because nu of x or uh, is an infinite set given any infinite set then you have sigma 2 power n which is plus infinity okay so nu now only empty set has a uh, measure zero and so nu is absolutely continuous with respect to mu there is no doubt about it because the only set with measure zero is that okay so now uh, what about for any delta positive there exists a n naught such that for all n greater equal to n naught, uh, you have that measure of n naught, n sorry, is less than delta because it is 2 power minus n. But nu of n is unbounded and therefore this you cannot have the epsilon delta definition which you had earlier okay 
proposition xs measurable space mu nu finite measures and nu absolutely continuous with respect to mu assume nu is not identically zero that means there are sets with non zero measure okay then there exists an epsilon positive and a in s mu a strictly positive such that a is a positive set for the sign measure mu minus epsilon mu sorry that is the way around mu minus epsilon mu. so you have two finite measures and then you are taking mu minus epsilon mu and we say that it has a positive set of post, uh, whose measure is also strictly positive for some epsilon ok so proof for each n consider mu minus 1 by n mu then x equals a n union b n Hahn decomposition so write a 0 equals union a n n equals 1 to infinity and b 0 equals intersection n equals 1 to infinity b n and recall that this equal to intersection n equals 1 to infinity uh, a n complement and therefore that is equal to a naught complement ok now b naught is contained in b n for all n ok because it is the intersection and b n is a negative set for nu minus 1 by n mu that means nu of this measure of bn is less than or equal to 0. So, nu of bn is less than or equal to 1 by n mu of bn. And bn is a negative set and b0 is contained in it. So, actually you can say it for every subset and therefore nu of bn is less than. Now, this is finite number and you have this and this implies that nu of b0 equal to 0. So, A naught equals B naught complement and nu is not identically 0. So, this implies that nu of A naught is strictly positive because you have the nu of uh, a naught equals nu of x minus nu of b naught ok everything is a finite measure and therefore you have this subtractive property and this is strictly positive and so therefore you have nu of a naught is uh, and nu of b naught is 0 ok so this is uh, positive ok so now by absolute continuity, we have mu of a naught is strictly positive because if mu of a naught were 0 by absolute continuity, mu of a naught will be 0 which is not true. But a naught is what? a naught is union a n. So, this implies there exists an n such that mu of a n is positive. So, now you take epsilon equals 1 by n then a n equals a which is a positive set 
for nu minus epsilon mu which is nu minus 1 by n and therefore that proves the proposition. So we have done all the preliminary work necessary. So uh, the important theorem which we will now come across is to show that um, just as we saw that nu e equals integral f d mu over e then implies that nu is absolutely continuous with respect to mu. We will show in the sigma finite case whenever nu is less than equal to absolutely continuous with respect to mu you can always find a function f such that nu e equals integral e f d mu. So this is the only way in which absolutely continuous measures occur and that is the famous Radon-Nikodym theorem which we will prove next time.